Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Total humiliation. Absolutely. You've got to get your own. Is in front of you, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've got two retirements today, so I'm going to do a little speech on for Tony first of all, and then my good colleague here, Colin, is going to do an equally good speech, I hope, um, for Jordan, who's also retiring today. So, so firstly, um, for those of you who don't know Tony, here he is. Um, Tony, actually we've got a few things in common. Oh really? Oh yeah. You arrived here on a temporary contract. And you're still here, way beyond that initial period. I actually arrived here on a one-year contract as well. In 94. Seems like a long time ago, and I'm still here. Um, but actually, you started with us in 2007. A long time ago. And I interviewed you with John and Tony Stacey. That's right. Um, and I've looked back at minutes of the first that was meeting. Really funny interview. <coughs> it was a very funny interview. I'm sure you've got some stories about that. Um, I look back at the minutes of the first meeting that we had in the Eastern Pavilion with William Berry oh, all those many years ago. And I have to say, Tony, you've lasted well. You and I are only the, staff, the only staff side people actually left now employed within the PCT. All the other members of the estate's PCT have since gone. Um, so it's not really that bad, is it, for a temporary clerk of works that you were employed to be? Um, I think the reason for this achievement really relates to your outstanding commitment and dedication to your role. Um, when I first uh, got Tony into the department, I thought, wow, this is great. Set Tony a task, and he would scurry off, complete the task in a timely fashion, but he would also give you bells and whistles, photographs, mm -hmm. videos, information from the internet. It was just unbelievable. Uh, and it was quite an outstanding and great piece of recruitment on my part. Sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, however, there is more... Um, to Tony that meets the eye. He is a keen detail man uh, with a very technical and analytical mind and he presented a real challenge I think to our designers and contractors over the years. Um, of course they should have been up to this but I have to say a, a lot of them fell quite short of Tony's outstanding requirements and I remember vividly in one of the first site meetings that we had with Very uh, and a chap called Paul Murrock <laughs> who you may all remember Tony a contracts manager for Veris, who was undertaking various works in the Eastern Pavilion, including knocking down the old X-ray building and refurbishing um, the three-storey building and also adding a new extension. Um, now, Tony had a habit of sitting away from tables in meetings, which quite an interesting approach. Uh, I'm sure it was part of a plan, um, because his idea behind that was really that he could, at the opportune moment, just pull the pin and throw in the grenade, and then sit back and watch the reaction. And he's a great observer of people, and I think he was looking for responses. He was looking for biting nails, uncomfortable shuffling in seats, red faces, perspiration, shortness of breath. And he was really very, very, very good at analysing people. Um, I have to say those meetings were enjoyably prickly with Mary's. And Paul Murrock asked at one point in the meeting, if Tony was suggesting that he was a liar. <laughs> I thought we were going to say that. A voice in the back of the meeting, back of the meeting, because away from the table, um, the reply was, I'm not suggesting you are a liar. I'm categorically sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> I did miss out a few <laughs> choice lines. <laughs> <laughs> there are ladies, young ladies present in the audience. That's been edited. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, Tony has very much come from a building site background. Mm. Um, we've had to explain to him on numerous occasions, John and I in particular, tone it down a bit, no biting, no gouging, <laughs> no punching, no mauling, <laughs> no kicking during meetings. In the NHS, we have tea and biscuits. <laughs> um, Tony has supervised work in nearly all the areas of St. Charles. In some areas, he's actually gone back and done them again. So some are like minor injuries, and I think she is around. Uh, we've done once or twice even three times, but each time he's done it in exactly the same way, producing an excellent job at the end of the day. And I think, Tony, that leaves the legacy of what you are, um, and you'll see as you walk around the site just the general improvements that you've made over the years, whether it's the new main entrance, whether it's the Eastern Pavilion and the, the new community centre, um, whether it's the external works that we've done to make safe passage for patients from uh, Exmoor Street into St Charles, 
Tony was an integral part of that, part of the design theme, but also part of that delivery, which is a real key skill. And I think that the positive feedback that people are, are often given these days is testament to you. Um, Tony's also worked on the, the upgrade of the main infrastructure here at St Charles on the electrical side, and really there's nothing about this site that you don't know, is my view. Um, we can ask you anything. Uh, I've got a few questions lined up. <laughs> and you'll give chapter and verse <coughs> with method statements, risk assessments, commissioning sheets, any ones, twos, threes, fours, drawings, any size, any colour, uh, photo slides at every stage of development that he's been involved in. He is a detail. Oldscourt Health and Wellbeing Centre. Wow, I'm not going to know about that. <laughs> Another great challenge. I was sitting at home one day, dreaming up the worst possible scenario for a health centre. I thought, right, really busy central London location on a red route, with a lack of parking access, on an island site surrounded on all sites by buildings, uh, with limited electricity power. And I thought, that's not enough. Aha, what we need is it's situated over a railway line, <laughs> <laughs> in one of the busiest, on one of the busiest tube stations in London, that was called. And I thought, that's it, that's Tony's next challenge. And to be honest, in his usual fashion, he got to grips with the detail very early on. And again, he's turned out a really superb building for the benefit of local residents and patients. So, <coughs> credit to you, Tony. Um, I've, I'm told this, and I don't know whether I believe it, that you own a prized collection of small metal drill bits. <laughs> and then I have an association with some sort of pinhole leaks. In oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. That may be just fabrication. Um, I'm sure that also Tony is very, very knowledgeable about nickel sulphide <laughs> and could talk us to death, but I'm just going to stop you there before you even start. Um, but I'd say, I mean, Tony's got an immense amount of knowledge built up over more than 50 years in the industry. Uh, he is a mountain of knowledge. He's always ready, though, to sit down and share that knowledge and produce his sketches, drawings, technical information off the internet, <laughs> photographs, and anything else you care to mention. He really is a mind of information. On a personal level, um, Tony's built a huge mansion in the Philippines that some of you may have seen on photographs, which I think now is his centre for health and well-being, uh, and a real retreat, although I'm told that his wife's family will ensure that he doesn't have too quiet a life. Um, I'm not sure how much that mansion actually costs Tony. 29 but, uh, okay. <laughs> but I'm told you can get a lot for a couple of rolls of lino and a can of WD-40. So, uh, I'm sure you've You're got good value. talking about the DS there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Not a liner. <laughs> um, he's often talked to me about how different life is out there. And, and I think it's a world away from what we know here in the UK. And I think probably until you've experienced it, you don't know. Um, but you've told me about the gate making. Oh, yeah. um, and that experience just sort of demonstrates to me the complete different ends of the spectrum that you en we enjoy here in the UK. And, and obviously Tony's going to go and enjoy in the Philippines, I think. There's no fire risk assessments. And no fire risk assessments. <laughs> um, but it's, I'm sure now you're going to find out what that's all about uh, with your extended stay away. So uh, I think really what I wanted to do is just to wish you all the very best. And I'm sure everybody here would want to do the same. Have a really happy retirement. Uh, we have got a few gifts for you. Thank you. Which uh, I intend to ask you to open as they're handed to you. Um, <laughs> but so it's all I want to say is really happy retirement. And thank you for your contribution. Do you want me to say something? <laughs> You're worried now, aren't you? We've <laughs> <laughs> got a nice bag for you as well. Yeah. <laughs> First present. Oh, no. oh, no. Sorry. That's for when you come back. I've got a for you. I might just want to refrain from opening that for the moment. We'll get on to the presents because they're the most important. Uh, small but vitally important. <laughs> uh, is this what I think it is? Better open it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, don't turn your back. <laughs> they're really worried. No, I'm not trying to persuade you. I'm not trying to persuade you too much. <laughs> it's it's more. Spencer's <laughs> Tobacco. Be careful. Yeah. There's a little bit of persuasion in there as well. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so 
so into I, server, not going to be very happy, they're not are they? Be very happy. <laughs> so, no. Carry on working. I know you don't want to give up. There's a remote access for, uh, <laughs> for emails. <laughs> 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 carry, carry on lobbing grenades. <laughs> yeah. Uh, into server. You don't want to retire. <laughs> Oh, how nice. You've got your name inscribed inside. <laughs> So you nicked that one off me. <laughs> 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 I got the, got the set. <laughs> uh, thanks, Tony. There was a, a couple of things I'd like to say. When I was 65, two years ago, I thought, this is it, I need to retire. And I arranged to meet David and have a little chat about me going off. Went into his office and said, I'm 65, I need to retire. Two minutes later, I came out of the office, not retiring. <laughs> <laughs> and I was driving home that night and I thought, how the hell did that happen? <laughs> I went in to say that I'm retiring. I was slight of hand. <laughs> I came out not retiring. So then, push around, push around, come on. The next birthday, when I was 66, I thought, now this time I've really got to go. But something happened that really worried me about going. It made me very, very nervous in time. And I'll tell you what it was. When Dolly left, it had nothing to do with the fingers in the machine. <laughs> 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 so then I thought to myself, well, that might not be too bad after all. That can't be the real thing. You're, you're, never, you're never too old to try something new. Today, but the fact she, she said unfortunately she can't make it because she was on holiday, so if that makes any consolation. <laughs>